Today we're talking about keybinds for mouse and keyboard in Destiny 2. I elected to use my stream setup so I can seamlessly swap between all the different programs that alter my mouse or keypad. I use a keypad. Anyhow, here we go in Destiny. I'm going to go ahead and show you what I use and why. So we'll start with the controls. My look sensitivity is 3, ADS sensitivity is 1. No aim smoothing, no inversion, none of that. As you can see by my mouse, my DPI is set at 800. If you pay attention to the webcam, you can see this takes a lot of arm movement to do things. Like if I want a 180, that's about what it takes. So. For some people, this is very very slow look consider like scope down with the sniper rifle if i wanted to do a 180 on somebody i would have to pick up my mouse move it over and then whip it and i still don't even make it so consider that so if i'm scoped in i'm going to want to descope partially then rescope partially so it it look something like that to get the same movement anyhow here we go continuing on we're going to go with key mapping Move forward, simple WASD, highlight player is 2. Emote is actually moved to my analog stick or D-pad on the keypad. It has a little directional thumb button above the spacebar. And so what I use is I just slam up on it and it makes my character sit, which is super useful for seeing someone around the corner because that's a thing in this game. Continuing onwards. Fire is mouse one, very simply. Hold the zoom, mouse two. You might see an arbitrary key like this for melee, which is J, but that's actually where my caps lock is located. I just moved it to an, arbit an arbitrary key so that I don't activate caps lock every time I want to type. And reload is R, but I actually have a second reload button on my D-pad. So for instance, if I'm strafing and I have to strafe right, how do I strafe right and reload? I have to like, finagle my hands like this, or, watch this, I'm just gonna tap my D-pad once. But what if I need to jump and reload? Like I'm trying to move from point A to point B. Well then simply, I reach over to R while moving. So again, just jump and reload, zero time loss, because I keep my jump momentum. That's the thought process behind that. It's like, oh, I need to reload faster. There we go, and I cancel it with the sprint. You're going to see I have the weirdest sprint key known to man, but it works for me. I don't really know a better place to put it. So here we go, moving on. Jump is spacebar and block is C. This is actually where my block is. I can't think of a better place to put it, but whenever I'm playing a subclass that relies on blocking, like Middle Tree Arc Strider, I switch it to this button right here on the mouse, the DPI switch. Otherwise, my DPI switch is set for my dodge, so I can very simply have access to the dodge. And you might have noticed the melee is on caps lock, same thing. So it's on caps lock. But I also have it on the analog stick. And so this allows the same thing. I can either slide in melee or jump in melee with no time lost. Uh, moving my fingers between the keys. And this is super useful for when I want to cancel out of my Icarus dash. As you can see, you didn't even see the animation. So it's a good fakie when you're floating over somebody like this. And this is why I chose to do this video on Top Tree, A Tomb of the Sky, because I think this is the most technical playstyle that requires intricate keybinds. So, oh yeah, there we go. I accidentally tapped it. But tab is my class ability, but I also have it to down on this analog stick. So four directions are used. Right melee, up sit, left reload, and down class ability. And this is super useful on Hunter for when I'm like sliding, since I'm using my shift or control key to crouch. So while sliding, I can activate the class ability button without shifting between two keys. It happens simultaneously. So again, these are the uh, functions of this, here I'm gonna see if I can show you, analog stick. So that's the spacebar. This is the analog stick. 
There you go. Moving on. Did I miss anything? Oh, okay, grenade, another arbitrary key. And interact, another arbitrary key. I'll show you where I have these placed. So grenade is on my mouse. This is so that if I want to stick somebody, like say I'm using a sword hilt, he says as he pulls one out of the vault. Oh, that's my phone. I need to mute that. <laughs> Here we go. So I just grabbed a random sword out of collections. We're going to equip it. And so this is where it comes in clutch. Is if I had it somewhere where I'd have to take my fingers off the strafe key, I couldn't third person peek, peek out and throw my grenade. I, I would have to take my finger off the strafe key, stand, and somebody would probably snipe me in that moment versus this, where you just strafe out, grenade, strafe out, grenade, strafe out, grenade. I'll have it here in a second, so I can show you that for real, or I can just use distribution. So here we go. Oh no, this tree has a sniper rifle. See ya, tree. <laughs> okay, so let's move on. Still key mapping. Oh yeah, we were on interact, so for instance, if I want to bust out my sparrow, my ghost is on five, and you see N is interact, all I do is hit this side button on the mouse here, so right here where my thumb is right here hop off ghost interact this is super useful because if my teammates down i can hold the interact key still have access to my grenade button you see i'm still holding down interact and i can tap the grenade button still have access to every key but i can revive my teammate what else do we got going on here super is f I can't think of a better place to place it. It is actually on the F key. And this is because I don't want to accidentally press it. I used to accidentally press it when going for reload, but that went away after a couple months. So this set of um, keys right here are arbitrary. The switch to my kinetic weapon is up on my mouse. Switch to energy is down on my mouse wheel. So up on the mouse wheel. Okay, I see. Camera. I'll show you again. Up is kinetic, down is energy, and I click it for the power weapon. So up, down, click. This is super useful for sprint canceling my weapons. Let me switch back to a rocket launcher. I can delete that sword. So sprinting is my Q button, so right here. And I need to press W with it to That's sprint forward. So if I do that while simultaneously switching to a weapon and aiming down sights, it will auto swap. So like this versus I'm, I'm going to not cancel. This is the speed versus this is with the cancel. Very, very noticeable. You can even do it to the rocket. So just like that. So I'll do it fast. And there you go. This does work on controller, by the way. You just have to really press that thumbstick in if you're on standard controls like I am. I think that's about it. Uh, sometimes I have an alternate jump button on the V key, but right now it's swap weapon. I don't use this whatsoever. It just depends on certain key schemes. Like if I want to rapid Titan skate, I might switch the control scheme to where if I like hold up on the analog, I can now switch these four keys to gallop. So it'll give me the effect of Titan skating without using a scroll wheel and without using a macro. For those who don't know, a macro is a program that inputs keys for you with the press of one key. So for instance, if I, I press E for instance, it'll hit the space bar at like 200 miles an hour. That's one thing you can do with the macro. I think that about covers it. I have my director and ghost set to the number keys. So three, four, five. And I use my other keyboard, which is located off screen to do any typing that I need. Uh, fun fact here for PC players, if somebody, you know, whispers something very, very mean, like um, you're bad at the game and you don't want that to pop up on the video, all you have to do is add slash add a question mark and boom, it floods your chat 
with useful commands and somebody doesn't have to embarrass themselves when they shoot you that hate mail. So now I'll show you how this interacts with the programs. So as you can see my mouse, here are my arbitrary buttons set. Again, I just used whatever wasn't used on my keyboard, set it to 800 DPI. And you can see that I have some alternative ones where this DPI switch puts it at like 3200 DPI so that whenever I dodge my hunter, I can hit the DPI switch and then I fly around and I look like a, a whirling dervish. They just can't hit me. Then I have one called Drink Tea where I have my W and Sprint key on my mouse so I don't have to have my hand on the keyboard whatsoever to AFK farm things, if you know what I mean. Uh, then block just switches DPI for block. And I think that's about it. So we can get out of this. This is my keypad. As you can see, it has an analog stick right here. I use this as my escape and this is my spacebar. I switch these to one, two, three, four, five. This caps lock to a J. And other than that, you're seeing exactly what I see. This is what I use. Now let's go with video settings. I go full screen, 1080p, 200 cap, even though I'm not gonna get close to that when I'm actually in game. You see I'm pulling at the top right of the screen, 120 in between like 100, 120. And we're back. Field of view is 100, 5, 105. Keep in mind that Destiny field of view is not the same as other games. So for example, if you switch between Apex Legends and Destiny 2, your field of view in Apex Legends equivalent to this 105 in Destiny is gonna be 101. So if you're playing Apex, 101 is equal to Destiny's 105. Brightness I think is standard. Here are my graphic settings. Uh, there is a useful NVIDIA website that shows you what each of these options do. I have high for most of them, but there's a couple things that I don't care about like motion blur. And there's a couple of them that could be, I think higher, but I have them at like high or medium. Render resolution hundred. I don't remember what chromatic aberration is, but it's on by default. Film grain is off. You can change the reticle color, but I keep it white. Then this is some just like useful information for whisper chat and that sort of thing. You can toggle the FPS display that's on the top right. And I guess if you wanted to change your language, that's in the Battle.net client. So yeah, here we go, Destiny 2. Uh, mouse and keyboard does have aim assist. If I'm shooting a you know random object like this tree, Obviously my bullet's gonna go where I aim, but if I'm shooting at an enemy and I'm slightly off target, you can actually see the bullets bend into the targets. I have to get close to something to demonstrate this phenomenon. So here we go, I'm gonna shoot a drag, I'm gonna try to aim off the drag, and it's going to hit it. Do not be confused, mouse and keyboard does have aim assist, or at least the bullet magnetism portion, like that. I'm not on his head and it gives me a headshot. So don't be confused, don't let anybody ego you down and make you think that they're a lot better than they actually are. So if you want to just practice on arbitrary objects in Destiny, you could play that like five finger fillet between trees, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, for now though, this is what I use in between competitive queues a game on Steam called Mick Osu, also known as First Person Osu. And it's a very, very fun rhythm game. Now, I don't want to get copyright striked, you know, so I'll try my best to pick a song that doesn't do that. <laughs> this is probably way beyond my capabilities, but I'll show you what I mean. And it's got other bangers. Some Toby Fox. I love this game. But you know what? I could do better. I realize I'm missing something very important here.
And that's about as, as good as I do with that one. I really don't want to show any more songs just on the off chance that I copyright strike the video. <laughs> but you get the point. The thing is, this game is so much fun and the skill ceiling is unlimited. You can keep playing harder and harder songs and it has very, very helpful modifiers on songs to make them harder or easier. For example, you just saw this Pokemon song. Check this out, Sides is shooting me in the background. If I wanted to make this harder, I could. Watch this. We're gonna go with a mod. We're gonna change the circle size to six instead of four. We're gonna try it again. As you can see, it's a lot more difficult. So let's say you want that easier. We're gonna leave the circle size at four and we're gonna change the speed to 0.8. I elect to click my mouse with this because it simulates a first person shooter a lot better than using the keys. Like here, I'll show you what I mean. So you could use the keys to alternate. Something like that. You get the point. I'm just showing you an example here. So I think that about covers it. You've learned why I have my keybind set like a Rubik's cube. You've learned why I have my video settings the way they are. And if this video is even remotely useful, let me know in the comment section. I'm going to ask my other... Now you can see me talking with my hands. That's pretty funny. But <laughs> now you can see that I'm asking other content creators to make a similar video to this one and I will link it in the description below. Like, it's actually coincidental that Sides joined, here you go, that Interact going in, because I'm asking him to make his own variant of this video because I think he's a much better mouse and keyboard player, has a much richer history of FPS games, and I think his thoughts and process on this will go a lot further than mine. But if you enjoyed this again, let me know in the comment section and I will see you in the next video.